All right, let's go and figure out how to moderate Zoom chat. This time we're going to use Windows. Uh, so here I am on the main website. I'm just scrolling down to the instructions, uh, written instructions. Let's go. So we first have to go to the Zoom settings, and I have to log in and make sure that the high quality video is turned on. Come on, here we go. OK. Now that link takes you straight to the settings. Inside these settings, it's really, really long. There's an area called Group HD. I find it faster just to do a Control F to search for Group HD. There we, there we are. Uh, you can see that on my account. I've already enabled it. This is the on. If it was off, by the way, it would look like this. And you'd want to flip it to turn it on like that. You can see it says your settings have been updated. That's how you know it's done. You can go ahead and close this. All right, the next thing to do is to install OBS Studio. This is actually a really powerful tool, Windows. This thing lets you do far more than what we're doing right here. It actually even lets you add more special effects. So here I am. I'm installing it. Come on. The computer takes a moment to get this big file. OK, here we go. Yes. Next. Install. Yes, please. All right. And again, this thing lets you do crazy other special effects. If you get very fancy, you'll end up looking like a pro streamer with all of this. Here we go. Let's launch. Great. Now it asks you if you want to do some auto configuration. We actually don't need to do this. We're only using the virtual camera. I could have chosen that, but I can also just press cancel because I'm just going to go ahead and pick the settings that I want. So the important thing to do here is to just make sure that your video is right. Uh, for the Group HD, if you happen to have an advanced education plan or a business plan or professional, or whatever they're called, not professional, the next one's up, you might be able to send it at 1080p. But for a lot of Zoom accounts, Group HD video is just at 720p. I'm going to pull it down to 720. Uh, again, if you have a more fancy account, you can do them at 1080. That will send a higher quality, sharper picture to everybody. Uh, the frames per second, though, we're going to leave at 30 because Zoom runs at 30 frames per second. OK, now once I'm here, I want to go and make sure that I can see my own webcam. So I go to Plus, I click on Video Capture Device, and here we are, uh, Video Capture Device. I say OK. I, I get to pick between a bunch of different ones. In this office, I have a webcam, which is uh, on the computer itself, but I actually have a, another camera right here, which is right in front of me. Um, I'm going to go and choose the resolution to be 1280 by 720. Every webcam is a little different here. You might not need to do this for yours. It might already just work. Uh, but here I am. It's 1280 by 720. And we're going to do OK. You can always tweak these settings later on uh, if you find that something else works better for you. OK. And the next thing to do is to go and start the virtual camera, because this is what's going to make it so I can send this signal into, into Zoom. I guess that means I need to start Zoom. So here we go. Here's Zoom. Actually. I already had Zoom open. As a warning in Windows, you need to actually quit out the Zoom and start again in order for it to know about the new camera sometimes. Uh, on Macs, that's not the case. But sometimes on Windows, <laughs> if, you, if you stop it and start it again, it works better. And that's because we just started this OBS virtual camera. It might actually have still worked, but I'm just going to be safe. Well, here we are, big boring meeting. I'm the host, I guess. Start. Uh, here I am. Let's go ahead and join. Join with computer audio. Failed to start the video camera. That's because the video camera, I think, is already being occupied. The HD Pro Webcam C920 is sending its signal to OBS at this point. Wait a second. And I don't even see the option here, what's going on here. So it's supposed to have the OBS uh, virtual camera as an option. I don't see one. So let's just go back out. Uh, let's actually make sure we quit Zoom. I wonder if that actually quit Zoom. Maybe that didn't quit Zoom. Let's try again. Zoom started mysteriously fast. That scares me, because that means that maybe Zoom wasn't really closed, unless the computer is that fast. Let's see. Let's go and look at some Zoom settings, just to see what different options I have anyway on my video camera. Oh, it's actually here now. So maybe it's just that I really, really had to close it. OK, here we go. Let's go again. And I'm including all of this in here just because I want to show you sometimes with Windows you need to be careful. Um, and here we go. Let's do this. I'm in. And as you can see, I'm actually connected now through this OBS virtual camera. And here I am. Uh, again, if it doesn't work, I, uh, stop it and start it again a few times, and then you should be good. 
OK, here I am. And I see that it works. And here's the thing. Right now, I'm waving my left hand. Um, and it's mirroring my picture. So that's going to become relevant soon because we're about to go and put words on the screen. And you know how it is sometimes if you look into a mirror, the words are backwards and that drives you crazy. So we're going to drive ourselves crazy a different way in that we're actually going to set up the Zoom settings. Let's go over here. So that we're going to make sure that our video is actually not mirrored. So you see, now I'm raising my left hand and it's on the other side. But this is actually what things really look like. And this will make it so that if you have any words, the words are straight. By the way, now is a good time to also make sure you have HD checked because we want to send the maximum video quality through to our audience. OK, very good. Now we're done with this. The next thing I want to do is I want to adjust the chat a little bit. So inside the chat, there's these three dots over here, which let me go and restrict who people can chat with. This is actually a pretty important step. Because if you make it so that people can chat with everyone, that defeats the purpose of moderating the Zoom. So I'm going to make it so you can only chat with the host and co-host. You see what I've done. It's only host and co-host. At that point, if people try to type all kinds of nonsense in to spam, it won't spam because no one else will see it. It's only going to go to host and co-host. And we're about to go and make a co-host who takes all of the messages and projects them onto a screen that we're going to put here for everyone to see. How to do that? Let's go back to the instructions. OK, let's close these windows. Tabs, close these tabs. Let's see what we've done. Yes, we have set all of our resolutions. We have added the camera. We have made it so you can only talk to the host and co-host. And here we are. Now we want to go and actually make a listener, make something that's going to listen to the, 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 the chat messages in the Zoom meeting. I just need to know the Zoom meeting number. The way to get the Zoom meeting number is to go back to the Zoom meeting. And over here, this is the meeting ID. On Windows, it doesn't seem possible to copy this. So I have to actually go and remember a few things and type it in. We'll do that. 844, where are we? Come back, this one. So this is the screen we were on, 844. And then what was the next one? Let's see. We'll make it more streamlined in the future where you can just paste a link. But for today, this is what we've got, 8685. 8755. OK, the passcode. What's the passcode? Well, to see the passcode, we have to do the same thing again. But look for passcode. Uh, if you choose a passcode that's easy for you to remember to type in, it can be easier. Uh, 314159 is easier for me. OK, and you can set that actually when you make the Zoom meeting. But if you didn't set it, just go and find whatever it was. Now, these two other things are just some special things for your chat moderation room, which we are going to create for you. You just need to make sure that this thing here is different from everyone else. And we give you a random thing when you open it the first time, so it's different from everyone else. Now, if you want to put something that's easier for you to remember, go ahead. But please don't use any of your real personal passwords. We don't want to know any of that. OK. And don't worry if you don't remember them, because the buttons here automatically create links and do the appropriate thing without you needing to remember what those are to type them in. Now when we press the Join Zoom, we're going to join Zoom through a browser tab, where the only purpose of this is to take all of those chat messages and throw them up into our moderated, moderated thing. So we'll press Join again. And now we're joining the meeting again. A big advice is to make sure you, join, you don't join the audio from this particular tab, or you'll get all kinds of crazy feedback noises. So I'll immediately press the Leave Computer Audio and leave it this way. Uh, let's get rid of this. I don't need it because I'm just going to see this. It shows that I, I haven't joined the audio. But now the magic is that this is in our meeting too. Let's go back to Zoom. In Zoom, I see that Chat Relay is here. And if I type a message to Chat Relay, it would appear inside the Chat Relay's part. But now the important thing is that there's actually a way to have all of this appear uh, on a moderation panel. So I'm now going to go to the next step. The next step says that I should go and open the moderation page. OK, here's the moderation page. Right now, it's empty. And I guess I want to go and start putting some messages in. And let's see what happens. So I go to the Zoom over here. I need to go and make sure that the chat relay has become a host, uh, a co-host, sorry, because we're, we're restricting so that people can only send messages to the hosts and co-hosts. So here we are. We've just made chat relay the co-host of the meeting. And at this point, if anyone wants to see their message appear on the big screen, they'll have to go and choose to chat relay. So here I am. I've typed hi there. And let's see what happened. Let's go back to the browser. 
As you can see in the moderation control panel, I now see that my message is here, and it's moving all the way up, and then suddenly it's approved. Green means approved. So this is the, this is the mechanic. The mechanic is when messages come in. Actually, this tab here, you can just completely ignore. Nah, no notifications. You can just ignore this tab, because all it's doing is it's taking any message and throwing it onto this particular screen. All right, but that wasn't the goal. The goal was to make it so that we can send it to everyone in Zoom. So that's the next step. So now we go to, we finished this thing. Yes, we saw the message go up the, the right column. Let's go and copy the projection link because this is now how we'll make it appear in, in Zoom. So we'll go back to the OBS Studio. That's why we're using this tool. This tool lets you mix together all kinds of different images and videos at the same time. Browser is what we're adding. And we're going to go and paste in into that URL what we just copied. Remember, I had done the copy moderation link a few seconds ago, uh, sorry, copy projection link a few seconds ago. Now we do 900 by 200. That's just what we've seen looks quite nice. And now I have this. I'm going to put this rectangle a little bit above the bottom because of the Zoom user interface. There's a little bit of a tab down at the bottom of Zoom. Uh, and let's see how this works. So let's start playing. Now I'm talking. OK, let's go back to over here, the moderation. So that message had gone in, and it's on its way up. And now it has just made it into the room. Well, has it? Let's take a look. Let's go back to the Zoom meeting. Oh, it's actually here. Do you see it down at the bottom? Now I'm talking. Uh, actually, I can do more messages, more messages, and another. OK, so let's go back. I guess Alt-Tab is how you switch. Yep. So now you can see these messages coming through. If there's something I don't like, I can just kill it. I just press the X there. And what you'll see is that more messages appeared here, but not the and another. And by the way, the messages here disappear after 20 to 30 seconds, so they don't just clog up the screen. If you did want to have lots of things like uh, first, second, third, fourth, it is actually possible to have a bunch of lines on the screen, but it's designed in such a way that it won't ever overflow more than, uh, more than a certain number of lines. It's that red rectangle, if you saw. So we're all here. Actually, you might wonder why I made it so that it's a little bit above the bottom. It's because actually, usually, the, the experience is better if it's in speaker view for everyone else. But since I'm the one who's running the show, um, it's easier for me to, to do this pin so I can see what it looks like. And you can actually go and adjust in this OBS. It's very powerful. You can choose where you want to put that translucent piece. OK. Well, again, the way that this system works is it's just that you can have messages land inside. Yay. You can have messages land inside. If you really like a message, you can just press the send it through, and it's going to send it through immediately, just like that. And this makes it so that you can go ahead and have a lively discussion at the bottom of your, of your meeting uh, while you're having a normal lecture. My experience is that in this, it has turned very big, boring lectures where you might have lots of people in the, in the whole meeting usually not saying anything. This thing turns it into something where people actually want to say something because then they could get something onto the screen. Uh, in ex my experience is that if you have an assistant helping you to moderate, then what you can do is you can just concentrate on talking. And then whenever you see a message appear that you want to respond to, well, it's actually even easier because it has just showed up right there on the screen. Hope that you guys uh, have some fun with this. It certainly changed the way that my teaching has worked, and I wish you all the best of luck. Take care.